the people who work at my apartment watch this video, please don't evict me. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So I've been trying to think of new fun content to put out there that isn't repetitive, especially since I did a whole month of snake videos. And people are just getting tired of seeing snakes, I guess, you know? I guess that's fair because not everyone on my channel likes snakes. Most of the people who subscribed to me in the first place didn't come for the snakes and now I'm just overwhelming y'all with snake content, which I don't plan to stop but I'm gonna space it out a little bit. So a lot of people don't find snakes cute and I've gotten several countless requests to make a video with some cuter animals, with some more you know, fluffy and adorable animals to look at or just not snakes. So I heard all the requests. I listened really hard about you know the cute factor. I listened really hard and I decided to make a video about roaches. Hi, Bubba. So as you guys know, reptiles do need to eat. Surprise, in case you didn't know that. And, another shocker, they eat insects. Wow, who would have known? So when you have as many reptiles as I do, it gets very, very tedious to go to the store and get crickets or get insects whenever it's time for the reptiles to eat. I got sick of doing that and it's really costly. It just adds up, especially when you have a bearded dragon that eats a million crickets in one serving or a monitor that will gobble down 50 roaches like it is literally a single crumb. I got tired of doing this and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna start breeding my own. So that's where I came to owning the hundreds of roaches that I own now. Welcome to my cute video. <laughs> so this here, let's do that uh, beauty guru shot. This right here is my favorite shade of Kat Von D lipstick. So, where'd it go? Oh, this here is a Dubia roach, right here. It's not a cockroach, okay. It's not a cockroach, it's a dubia roach. Why did I choose roaches instead of crickets? Some people are just, when it comes to roaches, are extremely squeamish. Well, for one, I'm not. I love roaches, I actually think they're really cute. They have cute faces, okay. Oh, there you go. But a reason I specifically chose these guys to breed as feeders instead of crickets was for a few reasons. So one, they don't smell nearly as bad as crickets smell. For those who are not aware, or even for those who are, when you have a mass amount of crickets, they stank. They really do smell disgusting. They smell disgusting and I can't, I can't. It's gross. So roaches have little to no smell. So that's already a plus. They breed so much easier than crickets. Not saying that crickets are hard to breed, but roaches are just, they breed so well. Ghost, say a roach fact and then be on your way. Can you say a roach fact? No. So they breed well, they don't stink, and also when it comes to protein, they have more protein than crickets do, so they are healthier or more nutritionally valuable. What am I trying to say? They're just good for, they make good food. So instead of trying to go to the store every week and buy like 150 of these, I just breed them. So in this video today, I'm just gonna be talking about how I breed these guys, my routine for keeping them alive, and just, some, some roach content, because I think they're cute, okay? Call me crazy, call me weird, but I think they're really cute, okay? And I know this is the cute content you've been wanting to see from me, so you're welcome. Oh, he's going down my back. Oh, I can't reach either of them. Also, if you are afraid of bugs and you're watching this anyway, because I know I saw when I announced this on Twitter that a few of my followers and viewers were like, I really hate bugs, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to watch it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you can find them 1% cuter after this. Or more tolerable. 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 Okay, uh, let's go look at my Dubia Roche cage and how I take care of them and all that fun stuff. Okay? All right, so as far as enclosures go, this is the setup. Start from the side and we'll dive into it in a second. So what we have here is this tub I am actually not quite sure the dimensions of. I will measure it and then put it on the screen so you guys know what mine is. You need at least a 10 gallon tank or a 40 quart tub. This will give them sufficient space to have areas to hide, to climb, to eat, and then to feel safe to breed. I have drilled holes in the sides of them to provide air for them because you don't want to suffocate them. And as hardy as roaches are, you don't want to make it hard for them to want to breed. I have a heating pad over here, which does not feel too warm right now, actually. I think it's still heating up. Then I have a very secure lid, and now we're just gonna dive into the whole thing. So, this is the entirety of their 
cage. Over here is the feeding area. We have one doing a little munch right here. This area has their food, which is normally every day. It's a different kind of fresh fruit and vegetable, and, and then their dubia grub mix. And then we have some quencher over here. I normally use water crystals, but right now I am out. You don't want to use regular water because if you just put water in there, even though roaches are pretty much invincible, if you put water in there, a lot of the idiots will just drown themselves in it. So it's best to give them crystallized water. This is just the, actually the cricket version of that. I normally don't use this, but I'm out right now of the crystallized ones, so I'm just using this gooey gelatin looking one. Can I help you, cat that I have not introduced on YouTube? This is Star, this is a breakaway collar, it's just while she gets used to the home. I'm still not 100% sure if we're keeping this cat. She was a stray, been living on the street for two years, and now she's showing her butt to the camera. Star, I don't want you in here while I do this. Anyway, there was a really bad storm and she almost ran in front of a car in front of me. I just, I brought her inside for the night just to keep her safe from the storm. Tried to find her owners, discovered that there was no owner, that she's been living outside the complex for two years. So initially I was like, okay, let's see how she does here. So she's still kind of getting used to the home. She's still not 100% comfortable with my cats. Really, this is her adjustment period. If she adjusts well, I'm going to be more than happy to keep her. My boyfriend loves her, I love her. But if she just, she might just do better in a one cat home. She absolutely loves being indoors, but she might just do best in a one cat home. She seems very anxious about my other cats. So <laughs> we're letting her adjust and seeing if she gets used to the house or or if she's gonna, you know, do best as someone else's cat. But I love her, she's awesome. Her name's Star. Anyway, back to the roaches. So, egg crates are the absolute best and cleanest sub substrate for them to live in. It's literally everything they need in one. It has places for them to climb, which means you just wanna stack it. And it has places for them to hide, cause they can hide, as you see, this one. And you can kind of see they're hiding in there really well. If you're wanting them to breed, they breed best at 90 to 95 degree temperatures. They can live perfectly fine in much less hot environments, but they just don't breed. Right now it is winter, so I'm gonna have to upgrade their heating equipment because right now, as you can see, it's sitting at around 80 degrees, and that's about 10 to 15 degrees too cool for them to want to breed, but I haven't had this problem until right now because it's just now getting colder in Texas. So that just means I'm gonna just have to get like a bigger heating pad and maybe patch up a few of the holes to keep you know keep it insulated and keep the warmth in here other than that it's doing really well they do also for breeding ideally they like the humidity to be all the way up to 60 so I'm gonna have to tweak that a little bit but I will say so far I've kept their humidity around 50 and have had absolutely no issues with them breeding. As you can see, we have some baby ones. Let's see if I can get this light to show. We have some baby ones right there and then a little bit of an older one there. And then we have the big, big breeders right here. This is Sally, that's Joey, that's Maribeth, not even a word. Is that a word, is that a name? Maribeth? No, it's not, Meredith is a word. What the hell was I trying to say? Anyway, this is Adam. This right here is Walnut. What? Okay, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't have all their names. Oh, but this one right here, this one right here, y'all. This is little Timmy. Little Timmy is gonna go places in life, and by places, I mean the stomach of a reptile. Dubia roaches actually do live about a year. So next thing I'm gonna talk about right now is cleaning their enclosure. I did film myself cleaning them up a little bit earlier. Basically, the stuff you see down here, this nasty stuff, it's called frass. Yeah, um, it's basically, poop. It's just very dry poop. And it just needs to be cleaned up because basically it's gonna be just a bunch of poop and their exoskeletons that they molted because they do molt. Um, they will molt for about a total of I believe seven to eight times in their whole life and then they die. So I'm gonna show you the way that I clean this up. I clean it up every week. Depending on the amount of dubia roaches you have, you're gonna either wanna clean it every week to every week and a half. I clean it every week unless like I'm really busy. It's not gonna be detrimental if you don't clean it. These are roaches. Excuse me. I don't even know why you're in here. Can you get out? That way. Go. No, no, don't sniff. Go. Ghost, you're in here too. I'm trying to film a video. Anyway, let's go look at the cleaning now. Okay, so for cleaning day, basically all I need is a place to put the roaches, trash, and some gloves. And all I do is I go through the bin and I clean out all the gross stuff because roaches do molt, they do die, and they do eat a lot of fruit which will attract fruit flies. So basically we just gotta clean out, clean it out, keep it clean. The roaches deserve a clean environment. 
let's go ahead and go through this. This is what it looks like when it's dirty, and then you've already seen what it looks like when it's clean, but we'll just go through a before and after anyway. I'm putting gloves on just because I feel like that's kind of the appropriate thing to do, but um, this, my friends, is what roach pellets look like. This is such a gross video, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, this is, this is what we're trying to get rid of. So, obviously I can't take every single roach out of here, but if they're in the way, you know. After a while, egg crates do kind of get disgusting, so I don't like to keep the same ones forever. I throw out a lot of the little miscellaneous chunks because that also does make it harder to find them when I'm ready to get some out to feed. If I have a bunch of just little tiny ones, it makes it really hard to dig through there and find actually where all of them are hiding. So I like to keep the levels down where it's not too extreme. So I just go through there and I find the little tiny miscellaneous chunks and I get rid of them. And then of course the really dirty pieces too, I get rid of. Before I throw them out, I try to make sure there's not any hiding in there because they do like to hide in the little crevices it makes them really hard to find sometimes so I like to look around make sure there's no little roaches in there hiding anywhere So now that I've cleaned up the area, I'm going to fix up this space over here, which is going to be the feeding and drinking area, while this is the housing area. So they have to come out and get their food and uh, water. Oh, there's one flipped over right here. Anyway, now I can move on to what I feed them and all that fun stuff. So that's the cleaning. These guys do not need any amount of lighting whatsoever. Lighting can actually cause stress and make them less likely to breed, but they can be in total darkness their whole life and they will be just peachy. So you don't have to worry about lighting. Something to actually keep in mind is that roaches actually naturally attract mites. In the wild, they kind of go hand in hand. You'll see a lot of forums and stuff refer to them actually as a symbiotic relationship. In captivity, it's a lot more dangerous than it is in the wild because in the wild, there is unlimited space for these guys to go their separate ways. While in captivity, a mite colony can easily take over a dubia roach colony because it's in such a confined space. Now, I'm not gonna be talking today about how to kill mites because I've honestly never encountered that problem, so I don't have any like expert opinions opinion on how to do this. I just wanted to throw that out there so you guys can keep that in mind. I will say that the cleaner the enclosure you have and the more bare minimum, the less likely you are going to create a mite colony because it's going to be easier to notice if your roaches start dropping dead or not, you know, if they're refusing to breed and things like that. Alright, so when it comes to food, I give them different foods every single feeding, but there are some, you know, main guidelines that I like to follow. One thing is that dubia roaches seem to be very responsive to orange foods. Food. I don't really know how to explain this or why the what the science is behind this But they really do like oranges carrots yams lots of orange colored food I don't know any better way to put that. I think carrots are a great staple I include carrots literally every meal, but they don't necessarily it, you don't have to do that So for this meal today, um, I have some dubia roach diet Which is just some pre-made food that I ordered online from dubiaroaches.com that has a lot of their basic Necessities, but I also like to give them a lot of fresh food. So today we have strawberries and carrots and bell peppers. We do like to mix it up. I'm personally allergic to wheat so I don't have a lot of wheat based products in my house obviously. Um, the only products that I do have that are wheat based will be pre-made food for the animals like this. But if you do have like wheat bran and things like that in your house, they do respond really well to that. I do like to provide food every other day. These guys are just like any other roach. They are scavengers and they can live off of little to no food whatsoever. They actually have an acid in their stomach that helps them digest and lets them literally live off of like garbage But since we are feeding these guys to other animals I find it best to make sure they are getting the most out of their diet So when they're eaten by my other animals my animals aren't eating trash based insects They're eating insects full of very healthy foods and Things like that go to your food. I'm gonna shake you off of me. Oh, did I just pop you in there upside down? Flip he munch he crunch he out of focus Let's look at some of the big guys. This one's very big. This one's large. Oh, my bad. Are you going to munch and crunch to you? What are you doing? How'd you get loose? Come on. Back in here, little baby. Where you go? Go eat. Get off of me and go eat. Get off. Wow, you don't even want the meal I offered you. So I'm gonna go ahead and show some examples of some newborns versus some breeder size dubias. That one's pretty small, right there. That's a little boy. That's a little one. 
teeny tiny. Here they are, chilling with their family, having a good family chat. There's a little baby eating some dinner right there. He's having his nightly carrot. I can't find any like newborn newborns. Here's one that is um, molting. They are a lighter color after a molt. Their new exoskeleton is still healing, so. Here, go eat. You just molted, you need good food. Oh, you are on your back. These guys are kind of idiots. Okay, let me help you. Here, I'm helping you. There you go, there you go, you munch and crunch. Here's another one that is freshly molted. Do you see the color difference? Pretty sure you can tell. Here we go, here's a mama and some babies. So here are some babies and there's a mama. Can you see the difference in sizes? It's time to munch and crunch. This little baby over here is still eating, going to town on his carrot. I find them adorable, I'm weird. Oh my God, is he coming to me? He'll have a long time to live, I'm not gonna feed you for a long time. We could be friends until then. One of those slightly older ones is venturing off onto my arm. This guy is munching and crunching so good. He is just crunching away. Can you see him doing it? He's working so hard on that carrot or bell pepper or whatever the hell that is. Okay, why do you guys keep falling on your back? You're not very smart. Go onto stomach, run. How are you? You doing your job, oh, okay. So I did just double check and they do go through seven molts. And with insects, between each molt, each life stage is called an instar. So these guys go through seven instars in their whole life. But how fast they do it, is not a set number. Depending on how well their environment is, how much food they have, their temperature, their humidity, the lighting, um, the space they have, that will affect how long each instar is, how much time between each molt, basically. A newborn dubia roach like this, in perfect conditions, can go from this size to this size in only five months. And that's if, you know, they are fed perfectly, have great temperature, have enough space, lighting's, you know, very minimal, their humidity's great, they're never hungry, things like that. Feeding them a great diet, that'll make them go their fastest. After they reach their final molt, they normally have about 20 weeks to live and then they die. But of course, it does depend also on how long it takes them to get there, which is really good for breeding because that means you have 20 weeks of breeding adults to breed roaches. So that's basically everything there is for these guys. And the breeding process is pretty easy. These guys breed very readily. They're hard to kill. I find them cute, which I know no one else does, but that's fine. Look at him, he's just hes just exploring. He's just looking around. I honestly think, you know, starting a colony, you can learn along the way, little tips and tricks. I will throw in really quick that I do not recommend feeding these guys dog food or cat food or anything like that. That is a common thing people talk about online, that they can easily consume these foods and live off of them. While it is true that they can live off of that, they can also live off of paper, honestly. But that's not nutritionally, you know, there's no nutritional content to that. And it's not gonna be good when your reptiles go to eat them. They're not gonna be very nutritious dubia roaches. They're gonna be full of junk. The same thing goes for dog food and cat food. It just does not have the nutrition that they need. Um, so I do not recommend feeding them that whatsoever. I'm sure you guys are really sad that this video is over and you just wanna look at a bin of roaches more. Look at him. He's using his little antennas. He's looking around. Just for the fun of it, I kind of wanna end this video off with something that'll really disgust people because I mean, I'm already there. I'm already disgusting people enough. So, um, thanks for watching. Please don't unsubscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot about dubia roaches and how to breed them if you want to breed them for your reptiles. My camera battery is dying, so I'm trying to talk really fast. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe for more adorable, cute content. I know you guys are just loving this. Oh, anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time I upload. Okay, bye.